Welcome back to the Omni Calculator channel. Today we have a very different video in which we're going to dive deep into conservation of momentum and how it relates to the different types of collisions we can have. Let's get to it. What you just saw is called elastic collision. So does that mean there are other types of collisions? Precisely. And in this video, we're going to talk about how momentum relates to each different type of collision. Let's start by looking at some scenarios. But uh, maybe let's do it safely in the whiteboard. There are three different types of collisions. We'll get to them later. But firstly, we need to understand that the key to telling the difference between them is checking if the energy and momentum are conserved. Wait a minute! Uh, right, I forgot to tell you what momentum is. Momentum can be thought of as the tendency of an object to keep moving the way it's already moving. Momentum, P for some reason, is mass times velocity. It is a vector quantity, so we put an arrow on top of it to indicate it has direction. However, if objects move only in one line, we can consider it as just a number. To understand the concept, let's imagine a track. A track is much heavier than a car, it has more mass. So even if they go at the same speed, the track would take more time, more distance to slow down to a halt. That's because it has a greater momentum, which means that it takes more energy, it takes more force to change how it's moving. Momentum is a key concept in collisions, and it helps us understand which type of collision we're dealing with. Let's start by looking at a cool object called Newton's cradle. Fun fact, it was not invented by Newton. It wasn't even invented by a physicist. It was Simon Preble, which you might know better as the computer from Courage the Cowardly Dog. But it's certainly not what I was expecting when doing this. As you can see in the Newton's cradle, all the things about the balls are the same. Even the speed at which they move to the left or to the right is the same. We can use a free online calculator, like the one I linked in the video description, to understand if energy and momentum are conserved in this situation. The actual numbers don't matter that much, but they have to be the same. Let's say the balls are 100 grams each and they're moving at 1 meters per second. And thanks to the Omni calculator, we can see that the momentum and the energy are conserved. So there is no energy loss in theory. I know in the real world there's always friction and other types of losses, but if physicists can imagine chaos as being spherical, I think we can get away ignoring friction. Back to the Newton's cradle, you probably noticed that all the balls there are hard. So let's take a look at what happens when some of the objects colliding are not. Let's consider now two skiers that bump into each other. Please don't try this at home, it's just a thought experiment. The first of the skiers is Lisa. She weighs 60 kilograms and is going down the mountain at a leisurely 30 kilometers an hour. On the other hand, we have Vinny, who is always going too fast and too furious. So we can see him here going at 60 kilometers an hour down the mountain and he weighs 80 kilograms. Vinny ends up crashing into Lisa and they both end up rolling down the mountain together like... <laughs> this type of collision is called perfectly inelastic. But the real question is, how fast is the ball going? Thanks to the online calculator we saw before, we can know the answer. In this case, it's 47 kilometers an hour. Also, thanks to the calculator, we can see what happens with the energy. And in this case, we have a loss of energy of 9%. This time is too much to be ignored. And what happens if only one object is soft and the other one is hard? Like when you bump into a door frame, for example, hey. Are you calling me soft? We can talk about a car crash if you prefer. Let's imagine a car weighing at 3000 kilograms going from the left to the right at 40 kilometers per hour. Another car with half the mass is moving at 20 kilometers per hour in the opposite direction. So the inevitable happens. After the collision, the heavy car slows down to 25 kilometers per hour in the same direction that it was moving. The question is, what happens to the smaller car? It turns out that the lighter car also moves to the right at 10 kilometers per hour. Remember that 
Negative numbers mean moving to the left and positive numbers means moving to the right. Also, momentum is conserved because in every collision without external forces, momentum will always be conserved. Okay, but what about the energy? Shouldn't it change? Well, the calculator can also help us with that. If we look at the results, we see that... Wow, half of the energy was lost in this collision. But where is that energy going? Why is it changing? What's happening? Let's make a deal. I will tell you the solution if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment with suggestions for new topics I should cover in the next videos. Anyway, until then, have a nice day. Bye!